since I've been working on the same few parts for a long while now, I thought it would be a good idea to go back to the instruction manuals, look and see what I have done, what I still need to do, and then have a little bit of a think about how I'm going to build the next stage of this ship. So let's see, page one, this one is basically done. This page has a lot of bits and pieces on it. These look like uh, depth charges. You can see they are at the back of the ship. I have made two of those and they are installed. I need to make five of these. Those are built as well. The crane is over there. It is replaced with photo etch. So this whole section is done. Tick that off. These little bits that stick onto the side of the barbette, they are installed. So that's all completed, that's completed. So in this entire picture, it's just this. In this picture, at least, I think everything is there. These weren't installed because we have a different sort of railing. But yeah, this whole section is complete. So all of this is completed. Very few things left to do over here. Just comes down to the boats. Come back to that at a later stage, I think. This page is effectively unstarted. None of this has been done. These have been constructed, all of that's been done. So in fact, this graphic, it's just these things that I'm missing. The lights, the signals. Over here, this is done. Over here, anti-aircraft gun on this one, that's complete. Over here, we see this little detail over there. Otherwise, this whole page is complete. This gun as well, and this one is complete. Over here, we have anti-aircraft guns, the main battery, the little boats that needs to be done. Otherwise, that's complete. On this one, anti-aircraft guns. Otherwise, it's complete. More anti-aircraft guns. Complete. This has been made. That's been done. Need to do all of that. There's a few things to do over there. But this is all very delicate, so I can only work on this once I've stuck it down, because this is an incredibly top-heavy piece. The internal struts on this needs to be completed in order of that. Same story over here. These, this is all complete. This needs to just be stuck down, no detail, nothing too complicated there. Ladders, as usual. Now we're just really going down pieces. All of this is basically ready to be done. That has been constructed and glued together. That is complete. These need to be glued down. These are, uh, all of that's been done. This is over there. That has been completed. More little bits and pieces that need to be glued in place. Over here, that's completed, that needs to be done. This is complete, that's complete, that's complete, that's complete. This needs to be done, plus all of this. Then it's sticking everything together, it's fine. This is all done. Now, yeah, this is just gluing together bits and pieces. Fine, all the masts need to be done, all of the um, holders for the boats, the cranes need to be completed. This is done, that's all been done. That's all done. Going down guns, going down boat, boats, and this is all done as well. 
these have been made and those have been made. So that's all done. And those have been done. All of these parts are ready. These need to be built. Bow to etch. Stairwells still need to be done. Okay. And then at the very end, I need to put on the propellers. Otherwise, everything over there is completed. I need to build the aircraft. And of course, that has been done at the very beginning. Then we need to look at the detail upgrade kit. Page one is mostly anti-aircraft guns. This piece is of interest. I just need to repair it by cutting off a piece of plastic. That's already been done. Same story over here. That's been cut off. So these are ready to accept photo etch. Page two. On this page, that part is already built. I've removed that piece of plastic and I have added this photo etch ready. So that is in fact done. This is mostly done. It's just missing this and the railing. This is done. That needs to be built and installed onto that piece. That is done. These little, what are these like wind deflectors, windshield type things, they need to be built. This is done, done. The, the, yeah, the wind deflectors need to be installed. I haven't done that yet. They're ready to go. This has been also uh, prepared. I've installed that, but not the green bits. That has been installed. Those have been installed too. So that's done and that's done. I'm just need to install the hand railing. That is need to be made. He has another set of wind deflectors. They just need to be made and installed. A11 has been installed already. This has been, these blue bits have been installed. The orange bits still need to be installed. Um, that has been installed. That has been completed. Uh, move further down. That needs to be installed. So those are plastic parts that are replacements. This has all been done. Um, those have been installed too. This, this, this whole row needs to be done. This has been prepared. I've cut that off and I now need to install this new hand railing on that. So that's ready to go. Just handrails. It's simple. Stairs are simple. Uh, this has been cut off and paired. This, these have been installed and this needs to still be installed. This needs to be done, but as previously shown, this is already prepared. That hasn't been done. That has been done. That hasn't been done. All of this has been done. That hasn't been done at all. When it comes to this piece, I need to place all of all of these orange bits. This needs to be installed to uh, hold the boats. That none of that's been done. So none of these have been made. Yeah, it looks like another set of wind deflectors, which go over there. Those have not been done, but that part can be installed. Then this looks like a little, looks like a crow's nest. That hasn't been built. This is all done, done. That is missing, but that is done. That is done. Over here, that's done. That's done. Need to do this and all of that. And that, all of this needs to still be done. So there's quite a lot on page two to get to. Page three, so that needs to be done. That has been done. That might need to be done. This needs to be done. This needs to be done. All of that needs to be done. That has been done. That has been done. These need to be built. Looking at these turrets. Done, done, done. This is all done, done. That needs to be done. This, I'm not sure of, I'll have to look into that one. This is done, that needs to be built. This is done. That was all previously done, it's all marked off. Building the crane, building the catapult. Going on to the last page. Aircraft, that all needs to be done. This has been done. These sides have been done. Water deflectors have been done. 
those have been done. The staircases, I believe, are those, but I'll, I'll not mark them just in case I'm wrong on that. These have been built and placed. Okay, so I think everything is ready for us to go on to the stage where we actually start gluing things down. But before I do that, I think I should finish off a few bits and pieces on the main deck and install the propellers. So let's start by cutting off from the sprue the boats. I need the J sprue, this here. I'm gonna try and clean out the mark in the center. So I'm trying to just file out the site where the plastic was injected into the mold. I'd rather not have that rather obvious sort of circle shape there. I think it'll look kind of silly. So this I'd imagine is some kind of a wooden boat. It's certainly going to be painted tan according to the painting guide, which indicates that it's wood. So if the little striations and things on it, I would just uh, imagine that to be wood planks or something. So if it's not perfect here, it doesn't really matter to me either. I don't need it to be a perfectly smooth finish. It's just that I would prefer to get rid of that uh, circle. That does look a little bit weird. J25, and then I need J13, and D31. That one is already nicely formed, so I don't have to worry too much about that. Then I want to put on C2. This is a mast. And that would be all the bits here that are outstanding. Then there's a main parrot that has some boats on it. So this is J37, which is this one. And it's also got a little mark in it, which is a little bit irritating. You know, this is one of the issues I have with Trump tickets. I don't understand why they have to put that um, injection site in that location on this part. I mean, why do they need to do that? Couldn't they do it on the bottom where you're not, not going to see it and where it's easier to access in the sand? You could just use some very nice fine sandpaper to, to easily remove the mark if it had to be there at all. So, you know, if, if, if they're going to choose a place to put one of these sites where you're going to get these little circles and, you know, markings on the part, I don't understand why it is that they have to choose the most difficult place to work. It's just so unnecessary. Anyways, at least it's not such a difficult thing to deal with in this case. So that's both of those. Um, and then it's propellers, which is J35. It's going to cut off these propellers quickly. Now that I've cut all of the parts off the sprue, I need to clip off the excess, file it down, and then sand it. Once that's done, it is ready for painting. I'm going to start by painting the wood color, the inside of these little launches. And I'm going to do it in a slightly lighter color of brown. Because once I add in the brown panel line, everything will get darkened. And uh, that will make it look more like the color it's supposed to be. And also we'll start by painting on the inside so that when I do paint the outside, I can airbrush that. And once again, just use the, the nice edge to get a keen line instead of trying to mask things off. Now it's much the same process with propellers. They need to be painted in gold. I really hate working with these metallic paints. You can't really airbrush them on, just jams up the airbrush. You can't really paint it on because they get all weird and globby and streaky and do all sorts of weird things. So what I'm trying to do is do a generous dollop and pretty much dab it on. Start trying to paint it on and then let it that thick layer of paint 
dry with the solvent evaporating off, it should flatten down, smooth out, and then give a good finish. Trying some new camera angles. I've taken the structure with LED strip lights that I used to film the completed models. I've taken an extra phone and I've just placed it on top of it so that you can get a top-down view of what I'm doing. I'm hoping that it'll work quite nicely. And then I've got the other camera off to the side like I have had in the past. Except now with two views, I figure it might be, you know, a bit easier for me to keep a camera to the side out of my way. And then if I want to show something in detail, I can just hold it up to the camera with the majority of the view of what I'm being doing being captured by this camera. Okay, so there it is. Quick and easy painting. Nothing fancy over there. That can be put aside. After the first coat of gold paint on the propellers, I came back and did a second coat with a much thinner layer of gold paint. And as you can see now, the finish is quite good. So those propellers are now ready to be installed. Then the next thing to do is to flip these boats upside down. Because I'm only using a very small amount of paint here, I'm just going to use this stick to pick up some paint and drip it into the airbrush. I don't want to waste paint, so essentially I'm just going to take a few drops, spray it out if I run out, put a few more drops in and do that until I've sufficiently covered these parts. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now all these bits are ready to stick down. I'm going to begin by installing the boats that go onto a turret. To do that, I need to drill out these little holes. So I've prepared my pin vise. After a quick test fit, I'm happy with how they're going to go. And then I'm going to put in some glue from below and hopefully seal it in place. I can also do the life rafts on these secondary turrets. Well, the life rafts, I'm going to use a thicker glue because I can't apply the glue from below or from the side without damaging the other paint. I'm using Revell contact glue that I've decanted into another jar. Next up, I'll do these two launches. And from what I see, this one goes right way up on the starboard side. And this one goes upside down on the port side, um, like that. And finally, the last two boats on the bow. And to end off the sequence of gluing, uh, we'll stick down the flagpole on the bow. I'm going to prepare the parts for the panel liner by spraying all the parts in clear glass varnish. I'm using X22. This will make it such that when I apply the panel liner, it is able to run easily and not make weird sort of splotchy marks on the parts. This paint has been previously thinned to the correct consistency, so I'm just going to pour it straight in. Since most of the hulls have already been painted and uh, had the wash applied to it, I'm only going to apply varnish to the new areas that I've just added, which is these boats and then the lower hull, which I had previously corrected from red to green. The importance of spraying the parts with an acrylic glass varnish is twofold. Firstly, any oil paints, enamel paints, uh, that you have used will be sealed in underneath a layer of acrylic paint which will protect them from the enamel based wash and secondly the gloss effect puts on a smooth veneer over the paint which means it will assist the panel line with running down into the grooves and, and such. I find that if you apply the panel line directly onto matte paint there's a chance that it will kind of diffuse and almost looks like it gets absorbed into the paint and then instead of it running into a gap you'll get what looks like a blotch stain mark in the matte paint and that might be the effect that you're going for but in this case this is not what I'm looking for. Now to prepare the hull for the gloss coat. Toilet rolls are very useful I have a quite a good collection of them and uh, this is a prime example of where you want to use them. 
I left the varnish to dry for a few days and now the parts are ready for the panel line to be applied. Now in this task, precision is not required. All I'm doing is just placing some panel line on it and letting it run into the gaps. There's going to be a lot of excess at first, but um, I'll clean that up later on. Doesn't matter if it's on too thick because you've got that gloss varnish, you'll be able to quite easily remove the excess with either mineral turpentine or a specialist solvent. Okay, so that piece is now dirtied up. It's still very wet. You need to let this dry for a little bit and then I'll come back with a brush and um, clean it up using a solvent. After spraying the gloss coat on a part, you'll notice that it gets a lot darker. That's just got to do with how the light moves through a gloss coat compared to how it gets diffused as it moves through a matte coat. So while everything will temporarily look a lot darker, when the matte coat gets sprayed on top of all of this to seal everything back in, the whole kit will light it up. When applying the panel line, try and load up as little as possible, place it on a bit of detail, and let capillary action pull the panel line to where you want it. If you overdo it, it doesn't matter. After letting it dry for about 10 minutes, then should be ready to be removed. Here I'm using mineral turpentine. As you can see, it is very effective at removing the panel line. If you want to leave more on or you know, remove less with each swap, you can just use the Mr. Weathering Color solvent, which is very gentle and it'll remove the uh, panel line much more slowly. Of course, you do need to have given your varnish sufficient time to dry, so don't rush into it. In this case, I painted the varnish on two days ago, but I reckon I could have been doing this a day after putting the varnish on. You just want it to have time to set. And this is where there's quite a degree of your personal preference. I don't like a very heavily weathered ship, so a lot of this I'm going to remove. But obviously, if you want it to look more weathered, just don't remove as much. And so long as everything's sealed in with that good layer of gloss varnish, you really don't need to worry about the turpentine. It's really not going to harm the paint. You can basically drown the part in it. But of course, before you, you do this on any of your own kits, make sure that you've uh, done a test on a part just to make sure that, you know, whatever solvent you have, it will not harm your paint. So my primary goal with this panel line is just to make it look less fake. If you don't put any on, it really does just look like a plastic kit. But just putting a little bit on, even when you remove most of it, it still has an effect. And um, that's kind of what I like, this very light weathered look. Something that was very subtle. It looks still like a brand new ship, but um, it just looks less fake when you have a, a little bit of dirt on it. At very least, it's bringing out detail that would be otherwise completely invisible. I'm just going to liven up these life rafts and boats a little bit, putting some brown panel liner in it. I think if there's anything to take away from what you're seeing here, it's how incredibly easy it is to remove the panel line. You're not going to get it back to how it looked before you applied it, but you can get it to be pretty clean. So you don't really need to worry too much about over applying it. You can pretty much always get most of it off. And if anything, depending on what kind of effect you're going for. The problem that you might find yourself being confronted with is that you keep on removing too much of the panel line. You want to just keep on adding more back on. I'm going to let the panel line dry for a bit. Then I'm going to come back with salt and rust streaks just to give it a little bit more detail. All you need to do here is take a little bit of the paint, make a small dot or line, and then let it dry for a bit. Once you've let it dry for a little bit, the next thing to do is some blending. So you take that solvent and wet your brush on it. Try and remove a lot of the solvent. You want it to just be moist, you don't want it to be drenched. And then gently swipe down on it. You only need a very lightly wetted brush. It just needs to have enough solvent on it to be able to rehydrate the, the salt streak effect that's on the part. As you can see, a little bit goes a long way. If you have a thicker blob, you can have a considerably thicker line like that. 
If you don't like it so thick, you can just continue to swipe it down. If it moves too low, you come from the other direction to pull it back up again. Moving on to the hull, I hope the camera can pick this up. But the effect that, that I'm going for here, hopefully you can see, are these very faint white and reddish brown streaks on the hull. The idea is that I want it to look like the ship's been sitting out of the water in dry dock and where the water drained off the ship and dried up at the very end it left salt streaks on the side of the hull and that's what these lines are supposed to look like. Now I just need to wait for the solvent to evaporate off and for the salt and rust streaks to dry out a little bit and then it'll be ready for me to spray over the matte varnish to flatten everything back down. The matte varnish that I'm going to use is Mr. Color number 182. Now when you use a matte varnish, and also the gloss varnish for, for this matter, make sure that you have thinned it properly. If it is under thinned, when you spray it on, you'll get what looks like a white sort of frosting. I think what's happening there is it's setting too quickly in these blobs and that's causing light to diffract and it has this white effect. Now, if you do get that frosting effect, don't worry about it. You can get rid of it quite easily. What you need to do is load up in your airbrush with the color leveling thinner and then just spray it on raw. What will happen when you spray on that thinner is that it'll rehydrate that freshly sprayed varnish, allow the particles in it to move around a bit more and level out and get into the gaps and then that frosting will go away. You can see the effect of putting the matte varnish on is quite remarkable. It really does make the paint colors lighten up and even the salt streaks and rust marks that I put on fade a lot under it so it becomes quite difficult to see them. For you to be able to really see them on this kit you kind of have to look really closely at the model so this brings us to the end of what has been a very long and very different video for me. I hope you have enjoyed this format. In my next video in this build series, I'll start working on the first level of the superstructure. Thanks for watching. Cheers.